Hello and welcome to Money Life. This time I'm going to talk about infrastructure leasing and financial services all over again. ILFS is an issue that needs to be discussed because as all of you know, the huge problem in the non-banking financial sector, the massive liquidity crunch has happened because this giant organization with 347 entities, four holding companies just sort of stopped paying and began to default on its obligations sometime in July last year. The government, in a bid to salvage this company, appointed a new board. Most of them are government appointees. It's headed by the well-known banker Uday Kotak. And there has been a long struggle now to recover some of that money and find a solution to the problem that ILFS has created in the system. This week, I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is that people in charge of the resolution seem to think that they would be able to recover somewhere around 45,000 to 50,000 crore. This is about half the outstanding of ILFS, which is conservatively estimated at anywhere between 94 to 96,000 crore, but probably all things considered, nearly 1 lakh crore. Now, getting half of that back is not a bad thing at all. It's pretty good. But there's another problem. We discover from those in the know that once the money is recovered, once bids are called, it's probably going to sit with the government until they can figure out a resolution process for the financial sector. We don't have a resolution process for the financial sector. And in this case, the number of people that will make claims on this 50,000 crore, assuming that this huge number will be recovered, is going to be so large that the money will probably have to remain and we may get tied up in litigation unless there is a clear resolution process that, that, that the government has to work on. Otherwise, mutual funds, pension funds, all kinds of people who gave short-term credit, maybe some of it unsecured to ILFS, are going to just be sitting there waiting for their money until a solution can be found. So where are we when it comes to, first of all, recovering the money. Is the recovery possible? What is going on? Remember, a new board was appointed in September 2018. We are like 10 months, nearly 11 months away from that date. Like I said last time, Satyam called bids in less than three months. So in 10 months, what have we achieved? I think it's worth looking at a rundown on what is going on and where are we. So first, of course, the good news on where have they recovered this money from? What ILFS did is this new board split up some of the companies into three categories, red, green, and amber. Very obviously, the red was debt, which is irrecoverable. They don't expect anything. And that's the largest chunk, which was 61,375 crore. Maybe there's a little bit of glimmer that things may be a little better over there. The amber part was 16,372 crore and the smallest was the green part where there is no issue, these companies are doing well and they are going concerns and that debt is about 10,472 crore. Obviously, the new board headed by Uday Kotak is trying to sell companies and recover the money. They've shut down a whole lot of companies. They've also started going after companies which were part of this financial entity in the ILFS group, one of the large companies called IFIN, which is ILFS Financial Services, which had a whole lot of debtors. Apparently, they have started paying up. So positively, 4,000 crore has already been recovered. It's sitting with the new board and they have to figure out that's part of the dispersal problem. Now, let's look at what they have done among the other companies. 40% of the assets of this group apparently have been in all kinds of road projects. Each of these road projects was spun into what is called a special purpose vehicle, which means it's a separate entity. And these were not only all over India, but also all over the world. So from Jan last uh, this year, January and April again, the new ILFS board had issued tenders for bids for the road projects. Apparently, responses have been received. And now they say in the next 10 days, they expect that they're going to be able to recover, issue final bids, final binding bids, which, you know, once they are cleared by Justice D.K. Jain, who has been appointed by the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal to 
vet the final process and approve of it before it goes to the NCLAT. This is a process that's been followed. Now, there was a little bit of a hitch here while the board put out a press release after I said last time that, that there's another video on it. I said that they've been bungling. ILFS said we expect to recover 20,000 crore. Actually, the problems do continue. There has been a mess up internally. Part of the delay for calling bids is because of problems that happened internally. There were a series of mistakes, including what I think is slightly scandalous stuff, like showing people having appointed board meetings when they weren't there, passing off resolutions, unsigned ones of board meetings that did not even happen. These are in step down companies. This went up to ITNL, which is one of the large holding companies, ILFS Transportation Network, it's a listed entity. And it went to Justice D.K. Jain, who caught the errors. And apparently a furious Justice Jain is supposed to have put in writing how he expects ILFS to conduct itself and present the notes when they come to him. So this process got delayed and now they said it is going to happen. I am frankly quite aghast that such a thing could happen. But for the purpose of this video, Let's ignore it for a bit and go on to the other positive things they have done. The other positive thing is the sale of wind energy assets. Now here too, there is Oryx Corporation, which is a huge shareholder. It's one of the four or five large shareholders in the holding company, ILFS. Oryx has an agreement. It was a 49% partner in all the wind energy projects. Like I said, again, there are multiple SPVs all doing wind energy. Oryx has an agreement that it has to match the highest bidder, which it did, and it is going to pay about 5,000 crore. This has been approved by Justice D.K. Jain, and the sale is going to go through. So this five, another four that they've already collected, maybe another 10, which they hope to get from the road projects, brings it up to only about 20,000 crore, which they've admitted to. So where does the remaining money come from? So they've drawn up a plan, again, where the new board has taken... All the joint ventures, which are with public sector undertakings or with state governments, where they are trying to persuade either the PSU or the state government to acquire the ILFS share. Now, this, if you ask me, is a bailout. There's another catch, okay, which is that in each of those agreements, there was an understanding that if there is a bankruptcy situation or if one of the partners has financial difficulties, then the share of that partner with difficulties will be bought back at a 20% discount to face value. Face value, mind you, in most companies, if the face value is 10, what we pay in the market is a significantly higher rate. If you are going to pay only 8 rupees against a 10 rupee face value share, the amount is going to be very small. And especially when these companies are still all right, doing well, so what the ILFS board has done is it has gone to NCLAT to get an order. Remember, these are all public sector undertakings. If they decide they're going to pay more, there'll be questions asked. Even the CAG and others can raise objections. They're playing with government money. So if the bankruptcy tribunal, appellate tribunal approves of them paying more. So what does the board want? The board wants it to be, each of these projects to be revalued at fair value. Now the fair value could well be even higher than the face value, in which case the chances of some recovery or rather some significant recovery is a little higher. So which are these companies? So ILFS has, uh, there are three major joint ventures that ILFS is looking at. One of them is uh, a gas-based project in Tripura, where it has a 26% stake, which is OTPC, where uh, it has a petroleum company as a partner. Then there's Mangalore SEZ, where ILFS had a 50% stake, where again, there is a government area development authority of the Karnataka government, which is a partner. It's probably hoping to persuade this company to buy it. And there's the third, which is a Paradeep refinery project, where Indian Oil Corporation is a partner. And this is again a strategically important company. To Indian oil. So the OTPC project in Tripura is worth 3,800 crore. So if ILFS is 26%, gets a fair value. There's a bit of money coming in from there. The Paradeep 
port has been constructed, ready. It supplies water. It's been supplying it from 2014. This was a build, own, operate and transfer project, which had to be transferred after 25 years. Now that ILFS is in trouble, it will probably be transferred right now and they want a fair value over there. There are similar projects in Jharkhand. There are many more projects in Karnataka, which the new board is talking to and hoping not all of them have started, not all of them are doing well, but maybe they can persuade state governments to cooperate, especially where the state governments are aligned to what the center wants to do, which now is going to happen in Karnataka as well. Another major project was the Gift City project. If you rec recall, I had done a separate video blog on Gift City. There was a public interest litigation filed here by a former audit committee head and independent director. This company did a gold-plated deal which allowed ILFS to walk away with humongous value. Imagine the irony, this public interest litigation which is saying that don't allow them to get a gold-plated deal. And now the Gujarat government is going to end up having to buy them out. So valuing Gift City is going to be tricky. There used to be people in Gift City who were considered too close to ILFS. Now there's a new managing director. So hopefully that's going to progress a little more sensibly. There was some effort to lease out some business, but that is small peanuts. The big deal will be if the Gujarat chief minister keeps up his promise of buying that 50%, and again, if it's at a fair value. Now, like I said, fair value to ILFS is at the cost of the people of Gujarat. So I don't know what's going to happen over there. Similar situation exists in two water companies, controversial ones, which I have been video blogging about repeatedly. One of them is the Tamil Nadu Water Investment Company, which was a 50% joint venture with ILFS. It's a green company. Honestly, this ought to have been a done deal by now. But for whatever reason, neither the ILFS board has approached them, nor has anything happened. So that's a holding company. This company, it's called Tamil Nadu Water Investment, TWICL, along with ILFS, has an investment in New Tirupur Area Development Corporation, which is the controversial one. Because this is where Adika of Mauritius, an institutional investor with over 27%, has been blowing the whistle from 2010, talking about fudging of books, talking about unilateral change. I mean, every kind of malpractice that ILFS could have indulged in has been done over here, including threatening to put the director who blew the whistle in jail, filing a defamation case against him. This is a can of worms. And the new board has to even talked to them. And it's considered a green company. Why are they not touching it? Shouldn't we ask all the IS officers sitting on ILFS board, why are they doing nothing, including having not done anything about appointing a full-time managing director there, despite a letter issued in June by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Now, few last things. You remember I said recently that one of the people on the board, a deputy managing director called Bijay Kumar, had complained about conflict of interest of Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas, who is a legal advisor, mainly on the road projects. Stunning as it may seem, a month later, this is a project where any top law firm would give an arm and a leg to get the business, but they haven't changed the legal advisor. Why? Because they want some continuity. Okay, I can understand that. I'm told that they've called for bids. But if you want continuity, if there are good reasons why you're continuing with Cyril Amartan Mangaldas, then why on earth has this deputy managing director filed an official complaint and made all kinds of insinuations about vested interests? That is a question the government probably needs to ask because they have appointed this board. And this board has been appointed in public interest. And they are doing the job that is of national importance to all of us. They need to behave themselves. They need to get our money. They need to get us the best possible value. And when you hear about little mistakes and fudging and complaints from inside, it really makes you wonder what is going on and is the government keeping an eye, very close eye on what's happening. Because remember, there's a new issue, which again, that there is no financial resolution process is something that we should have been discussing 10 months ago. Why wasn't it done? I have no idea. Now we have pension funds and others. We have the RBI governor, you know, reducing interest rates, 
saying that we will tide over the problem, it's not going to be so easy. A lot more work has to be done to get past this problem. And I hope the government is paying attention. Luckily, this government has allowed people to function at, at least where financial resolution is concerned. Let's hope we get some answers very quickly. But I strongly believe if we the people don't keep a sharp eye on what's going on, things can just languish. Remember, the Harshad Mehta scam investigation is going on for 25 years. The custodian is sitting on funds. The custodian who was set up under a special act for a small period has become a permanent entity. It's been around 25 years. The cases are still being heard. We cannot allow that to happen with ILFS. And I really hope very strongly that the government ensures that it doesn't happen. Thank you. Thank you.